So he's here in the studio live and color. Let me welcome him so you can hear his voice. Mr. Alexander Eduse, you're welcome. Thank you, Patrick. And let me take this opportunity to thank your listeners. Um, listen far and wide, those within the 50 kilometer radius, those um, further than that abroad mm. who listen to the good work you do here. And also thank you and your management for allowing me to come to your studios this afternoon. You are right. Um, I was pulled on the last minute uh, working on some documents to come in here and speak with you. Uh, and also I'm expecting that as you've actually announced, um, as part of the processes um, for Meet Your Friends um, coming through the sister, yeah. um, folks will come out tomorrow at the forecourt of the Dufia of KG mm. um, Togbe Akolache's uh, yeah. palace. palace. And then we can engage and continue with the conversation. All the questions you could not ask here, mm. we can continue over there. And mm. uh, those who want to see me, um, appropriately answering questions face to face can also do that yeah. but today i wanted to come and uh, promote um, the programming for togo akolache and his traditional area mm -hmm. and also pay courtesy call to you um, mm -hmm. for all the wood good work you and your management have been doing uh, to promote uh, this administration's agenda to ensure that equal development um, um, survives in mm -hmm. all sectors of this country and all areas of this country. Thank you. All right, thank you very much uh, for honoring our invitation. Uh, though it was just a short notice, but you decided to come talk to the people because it's important. The catapult uh, has become a national issue, sure. demanding national attention. Uh, Keta has ever been a port area before where slave trade used to, that's according to history, mm -hmm. but not the kind of modern ships we see today docking mm -hmm. Uh, in those days so the place being declared by the president his excellency in anado as a port zone uh, uh, well it's a step in the right direction initially lots of first thoughts uh, it's an impossibility but with the steps that has been taken so far uh, we hope it comes to pass but then we want to know you who is dr alexander eduse well um a child of a family of seven if you want to find me where I come from, uh, PO Box 1, Antoine. So if you come to Ashanti region and you come to Antoine, you find me. I will not be a missing item at all. Okay. I try my best since I've been in Ghana for every other weekend to spend the weekend in my home village. And in, in, invariably, I grew up in um, a small place called Ichamso in Ashanti region. Did my primary education. Uh, through Queen Elizabeth Daycare, went to State Experimental, it used to be an experimental school established by, I think, um, the Champon regime. I moved from there to city of Kumase. Those days, it used to be one of the schools you have to go to to be who, to be the who is who of schools compared to Cambridge and Royal International and the rest. From there, I jumped to Tia Amadia, uh, the famous Amasphobia. I left Tia Amadia. I went to a CHG secondary school, went to University of Ghana, Lagon, did philosophy with history, left the shores of Ghana in 91, um, I think in 25th of July, went to United States, um, enrolled in uh, the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, um, did my PhD, and then um, taught for a minute, working for the state of Ohio, I also went to law school during the same period, finished my law degree, came to Ghana, um, I think 2007, took my Ghana bar, passed, went back, uh, back and forth practicing and teaching, working for the state of Ohio. At some point in 2019, um, uh, I fell in the favor of the, of the government of the day and the president of the day invited to come and support the processes get into the construction of the Kitapo development. Hmm. And that is how I ended up. So you're a lawyer here. too? Yes. I didn't know. Well, I didn't know you were. A there's lawyer. a lot of things that a lot of people don't know. Okay. So it's assumed, uh, people assume a lot hmm. about me. 
and what I, what I can do and what I've been endowed with my academic career to be able to do. Um, and, and so it is not surprising that you don't know that. Right, so you are director for Catapults. Mm -hmm. Like you rightly said, uh, you fell in the good books of the president to come help facilitate the processes uh, towards the establishment of the port of Keta. Uh, there has been lots of controversy surrounding that your appointment. That's true. Uh, you know? Yes, I know. Okay, so you hear everything people say oh, I've on heard, radio, on I've TV? Heard, I have heard a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, in fact, at some point in time, it's a joke, uh, undertone jokes among the CEOs and and friends of mine mm -hmm. that maybe I'm the most vilified CEO of the Ekufuado administration and I was telling somebody that after all the bosses finish their eight year term uh, maybe I might have to consider also running for something because my face has been on newspapers TV everywhere Everybody my name has you. been used in vain mm -hmm. so many times mm -hmm. and most of the time not within the truthful contest of what it should be used for mm -hmm. But because everything in Ghana is politicized, even the development of this edifice in this part of the country is also politicized. Mm. Uh, hopefully, if we have time today and tomorrow, we will try and clarify a lot of things mm. so that uh, the, the people for whom this administration is trying to position well so that they can get a fair share of the national cake, mm. understand the import of Ketap water and its development. And then we can take it from right there. so you said uh, your position uh, was being used mostly not in a truthful contest mm -hmm. so what is the truth about your designation well as, so uh, let me share something with you right. you see the nomenclature of the mm -hmm. director of port um, i think has caused a lot of rancor among the rank and file of the opposition party and then of course even within the MPP party. For those who do not understand what it means, um, make so much noise about it. So let me explain clearly. I was brought in to um, help support the processes to development. Now, ordinarily, as you yourself said, you did not know I was a lawyer. You assume there's a, some man, a politically colored person sitting abroad and because his government is in place, was brought in to help. But technically, when you are doing these processes, a lot of documentation, and that those documents have um, legal ramifications. I am not just a lawyer in America, I'm also a lawyer in Ghana. And of course, this is international competitive tendering. You are dealing with foreigners. So you need somebody who understands not only Ghanaian law when it comes to looking at documents, but also foreign law when doing these things. So my role, um, the only person appointed to the so-called Kita port development is me. Anybody else who works with me works for Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. So we have not, or this administration has not appointed so many people to a Kita port. There's nothing like that. Everybody works for Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. I was just the appointee of the government to Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to help facilitate the process. Now, you can call it anything you want to call. I don't know if you change the name, nomenclature to um, Ketapot coordinator or Ketapot um, process person or uh, just give it any name. Lots it will even change the dialogue mm. because those who do not know what is happening will still have something to say, right? Now, the naming that has created this only came about because of the level they place the person. So I've been placed in the level as if I'm running the Tema port or the Takrati port. Why do you do that? Any foreign person worth a sort in, in attempts to engage GPHA will not engage anybody who is not within that class or band of authority to negotiate. So it, it was incumbent on GPHA to ensure that whoever has been appointed to come and lead the process to develop the port has some kind of clout within their structures to ensure that that person can adequately engage foreign enterprises interested in developing the port. So the classification that I'm putting or put on to be able to engage gives me that authority with the support of my director general to engage any foreign entity interested in doing the, 
doing the port. And that is why the nomenclature they use in, in, in GPHA is director of port, right? And so because Keta has been earmarked as a port already, they said director of port, Keta. It means nothing. It just means the same person who is facilitating the process to get Keta port. So you can even call me uh, the director responsible for Keta port development. And it, 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 it amounts to the same, mm. right? So if you say that you can only be called director of port because there's, uh, which is a bad taste because there's no functioning port. Mm. That is also a misnomer. I have explained that. By our laws and our processes, a port comes to existence once an executive instrument is signed. So once the president or the government signed an executive instrument, a port automatically came to birth. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to see brick and mortar in place or you have to see infrastructure in place. The moment the executive instrument is signed, a port comes to birth. So if you call me for the port development, for the port coordination, for the port of Keta, it means nothing. The work is being done and the work is being done according to law and processes. Now, remember, when we earmarked Buankra as a port facility, an executive was appointed. When we earmarked Giedek to do add value to aluminium and bauxite, a CEO was uh, appointed. When we did uh, Buemda before construction, an executive was uh, appointed. It doesn't matter what name you give it to it. So far as the work is being done and Ghanaians are getting the benefits of it, that is more important than the name per se. Now, if you want to evaluate the processes of what we have done so far, that's a different story altogether. You can then question, okay, so what are you doing? I mean, but then, of course, you have other people too who come into being and claim that, um, oh, you are not a mechanical engineer, you are not a, a civil engineer, you are not... We are not there yet. We are not there yet. And when the point gets to construction, that is why you create a team around you. And they all have specialties as to the contribution they put in place to get things going. Until such time, you cannot actually just throw tomatoes into the equation by destroying the discussions that we are having. So for now, I will leave it until you have another question to ask. Well, uh, quite understandable mm -hmm. that uh, this is not the first time a CEO is being appointed to facilitate a process for the establishment of uh, a port or mm -hmm. a state institution. Uh, according to you, even before Buem Dam mm -hmm. came into existence, there was a, a CEO. Yes. So, so far, what have you been doing? Well, thank you for asking that question. It's very important that um, folks understand that uh, the minister was engaged yesterday, I believe so, uh, in the minister's press briefing. And he made it very clear to Ghana and the, and the rest of the world that uh, we've done a lot of work. So, so that we are not lost with timing, um, let me be very categorical that my appointment took effect on the 1st of April um, 2019. So, so that people will be able to count. So 2019, 2020, one year, 2020, 2021, two years, 2021, 22, 2022, 23. So April 1st, I'll be four years in a row. I would have been imposed. So let's get it right. For me to be able to make sense of what we have done and what we've been able to achieve, I appreciate this. Thermal Port was built somewhere in 1965. Um, in 2012, Terminal 3, as we now know it as MPS, uh, started talking to GPHA. Somewhere in 2015, it is my understanding, an agreement was signed for Terminal 3 to be built. Now remember, the port already existed. The space to put the terminal was already there or the waterfront to take the terminal was already there. All they were doing was claiming the land to build the terminal from 2015. I believe the port was commissioned in 2020, right? Five years. 
Okay. I came in 2019. There is no port in existence in Keta. So to expect within four years to see mortar, bricks, and structures, I don't think people are being fair to the process. And the minister said it very clearly yesterday, building a port is not an event. It is a process. So for you to expect a, a structure in place within four years, because I've been appointed, is considering the thing to be an event. Now, if you believe it is a process, then, of course, the process needs to be respected, right? And the process needs to be respected in what I've always said is you plan, you plan well, you continue planning, you plan better, and ensure once you get to bricks and mortar, that foundation is solid enough that what you've built is not on quicksand. We are not going to make the mistakes that we perceive in Takrade or the mistakes we perceived in Tema and repeat those same mistakes in Keta. That shouldn't happen. Keta post development is going to be leapfrogging technology, ensuring that we are meeting the current standards, international standards, ensuring that the people of Ghana and Volta region and Oti region are well served within the context of what this administration perceives Keta port to be developed. Once you can appreciate that, then you can give us a room to properly plan and plan better so that the people of this place do not suffer the consequences, negative consequences of a port development. And that's all we are trying to do. Making sure that we have adequately set, settled on where we will place every um, structure or development in the port enclave to ensure that there are no consequences, negative consequences to the people and their environment. And that's all we are trying to do. Now, what have we done? I came in April um, 2019. Executive instrument had just brandly been signed by the government. Um, unfortunately, immediately we arrived, COVID started hitting us. Uh, we, we leverage on technology to um, process our feasibility which we succeeded inter 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 internationally competitive. Um, we got sell horn, um, a, a German company won the bid. The, uh, we leverage on the technology, as I said, to ensure that they will start the feasibility. Uh, we use technology for them to en do get stakeholder engagements. And the moment we were able to allow flights to come in, they came in, they did on the ground work but remember they had local partners so the local partners were doing a lot of the research on the ground they were doing the research out there and also engaging um, communities um, shippers council gpha gma um, uh, fisheries just name it all the stakeholders um, within our industry when they came the rest that were left epa and the rest they engaged them we came to Kita, we went to other environs um, to engage um, residents to see what their interests are. Then they went back. They put their documents together. They did all the tests they're supposed to do. Results were sent to them. They put their draft together. When the doors were open again to the COVID period, they came back. They came in the presentation. The concerns we had as uh, an authority, we gave it back to them. Changes we thought needed to be made were given to them. They made the necessary changes. They submitted back to us. We made corrections we could make. They sent it back. Then they submitted their final draft. So as I sit here, feasibility has been completed. We moved to the next. And you led that process? Or yes, you? yes, yes. Uh, with the engineers and the um, staff that was from GPHA, GPHA assigned to support the services. Okay. Once that is done, we move to what we call environmental and social impact assessment. Without that, you will not get a solid investor because the investor will take the feasibility study. The investor will also take the environmental and social impact assessment study, add it together, and then make informed decision with their investment. We have already um, um, sent the expression of interest Companies have expressed their interest. We've we finished reviewing the documents. We've selected um, a company, but the threshold is beyond our 
control. We've sent it to Central Entity Tendering Committee. They are about to make a decision. Once they make a decision, they will select the company that has won and the company will start. We are anticipating within five to six months that company will finish its services. Now we will have a complete document for an investor to make a decision. While we are waiting for this process to end, through the directives of the ministry, we decided to now publish uh, for expression of interest. We did. We opened it somewhere last year, September, August, and we closed it somewhere in November of la 31st um, and, and, or 30th of thereabout. And, and we had almost about 20 companies that expressed their interest to invest. We, we, we went through and then we engaged, I think, about 13 or so, or 12, 12 of them. We felt 12 of them were very solid for us to engage. Out of the 12, we are envisaging we will be engaging about five to six of them. Solid. Now, we are waiting. We, 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 in, after engaging them, gave them some time to augment the records that they had. Um, I'm told almost the deadline we gave them, everybody has submitted their records to us. We are going to sit down and review them. Within a month or two, we will engage the five, six that we think are solid enough for us to proceed. Invariably, those five or six cannot make an offer until they've seen the environmental impact assessment. But we have actually at least moved to, from 20 to probably six that we can now send a request uh, for proposals from them. Once we send the request for proposal, by that time, the ESI would have been completed. So once we send it to them, they will have the feasibility, the ESIA, to combine to then make their proposal to us. So we've shortened the time frame that we will need to get that going. We are anticipating all things being equal. By September, November, this process would have ended. And whoever would have come out as a winner through our review of the proposal, we would have been able to conclude by December and would have selected an investor to move it forward, all things being equal. I think that was captured on Daily Graphic front page today. Yes, because the minister repeated exactly that. And I'm repeating exactly what the minister said. Okay. I cannot vary from that. Now, if that is the case, we are anticipating between the first quarter of next year, an investor would have started mobilizing to move it forward. Right? So this is a process, if you look at the trajectory, being that Keta port development is a green field, we have moved it further than even when MPS was building Terminal 3. So for anyone to say that we are not doing anything, it's not being fair to the process. Are you following me? Because MPS did Terminal 3 with Temaport being in existence. We are doing a green field. Nobody has been here before. Everything we are doing is green. Are we ambitious about looking at first quarter of 2024? Sure, we are being ambitious. That's why I keep caveat, caveating it by saying all things being equal. There may be give or take a quarter here, a quarter there. But the commitment to ensure that we can advance the development of Keta Port before this administration's term ends is very much high. And you can be rest, rest assured that this administration is not going to relent until we've secured all the necessary documentation and commitments to move this forward. Now, apart from what we've done so far, GPHA has still left the door open because until we start digging the ground, you may never know the offer you will get. So if you go to GPHA's website right now, the door is still open for any consortium that is interested in developing a port to bring an offer, right? And we will see what we are going to get. On to such time that we dig the ground, anybody who is interested in coming to us and saying I have a better offer can do so. Now, prior to that, remember, Diamond Cement had asked to have a private jetty to be able to bring their clinker through. That offer seemed not to have um, gone through with GPH, you know, because GPH was not interested, not because somebody doesn't like diamond cement, or not because we did not want development in this area. The problem with the diamond cement offer was diamond cement wanted a private port. 
within our legal uh, frame, we do not have a private port in Ghana as compared to other countries. If you go to other countries, um, individual companies can own their own port. In Ghana, we don't have that. You have to go through GPHA. And I think that is where the misunderstanding came from. But with the, with, the, with the model we have put in place in Kita Port, GPHA currently runs a hybrid port, which means GPHA is an authority and GPHA also provides services. For the first time in the history of Ghana, Kita Port is going to be an authority port. GPHA will be only landlord. And every services being provided there will be handled by private sector. So this is a time for Diamond Port, Diamond Cement, to come to the frail and also develop their um, clinker terminal or bulk terminal whereby they can bring bigger draft vessels to service um, their cement factory. So the discussion is going very far. Now, Kita Port is not just um, something that just popped up. As you said in your intro, Kita has had a history of being a mercantile port. Way, way, way time below. Now we call the port that we put in KG, Kita Port, because Kita is the name we know. But the port proper is in KG. Everybody knows that. And in fact, we have had a little bit of rumbling. Why don't you call it KG Port? We said Kita Port is what the name we've picked. We, this administration, after bringing us on board, decided, are we just building a port? And what else do we do with the community? So in our planning, in our feasibility, we are not just building a port. We are building a port and a port city and an industrial enclave. Now, people don't talk about that, right? And they've confused a port city, a port city and a and port an, and an industrial, an industrial enclave. enclave. Where? <laughs> see, you look at where, what you see and you think, where is the land, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, let me help you. Mm. The port that we are building is the water you see. GPHA and the government of Ghana only owns land, uh, water. And any water um, is port because we will claim the land from the sea. Right? Uh, we are anticipating claiming was about 20 hectares of land. 20 hectares? Yes, from the sea. Yeah. So when you don't know, you will say it's a gimmick that we are giving you. But our feasibility is very clear. We are claiming all our port land from the sea. Now, remember, port land is very expensive. The lagoon is there, and it could have been easy for us to play games and come and dredge your lagoon. But the lagoon is a Ramsey site. It's a world-recognized site that we need to protect. The inhabitants of this area depend on the lagoon for their survival. So we cannot bring a commercial entity here and destroy the livelihood of the people. So in our feasibility, we've taken that into consideration to ensure that we can create a balance between a commercial entity coming to Volta region and also ensuring that the indigenous livelihood are not destroyed. We are very sensitive towards that. That is why our ESIA is going to address the sensitiveness of the development we are trying to make so we can move it forward. So rest assured that we, we have thought through all this. Okay. And that's why I'm saying you plan, you plan better, and you continue planning to ensure that you can have a win-win for your development and the life and the and the coexistence of the port and the inhabitants of this area All right so listeners i've been talking to mr alexander do say doctor uh he's the director for Cataports. in case you just tuned in sun city radio 8.9 it's live and uh doctor i'd also want to know you said feasibility studies have been completed and uh, the last time i listened to the minister he mentioned some figures as what government will be needing for the first phase of the project some 650 million dollars uh, how many phases uh, has the port been divided into and uh, when should we expect work to begin uh, you just said by december we will know the investor that will be coming in mm -hmm. so after we know the december uh, the investor that will be coming in all other things being equal by december uh, what next okay so in the feasibility the, the feasibility has uh, a zero uh, phase, phase one, and phase two. Now, the zero phase, from our perspective, is just doing breakwater. Ordinarily, breakwater is a, is a domain of GPHA. Now, people have also confused port development. 
the mere fact that this administration is advancing the poor development in Qatar doesn't mean poor development is part of the Ghanaian budget. There's something that people confuse. GPHA's development is always within the books of GPHA. It is only when you are engaging foreign entities that it goes to parliament for parliament to ensure that the agreements between GPHA and the foreign entity is sanctioned by parliament. Are you following me? Now, this administration is encouraging GPHA to promote what has been on GPHA's master plan all along to develop Ketaport. So GPHA has had Ketaport development on its master plan. It is only this administration for years, not now. It's only this administration that came and said, go ahead and develop it. So GPHA has had... Uh, Ketaport all along in your master plan. Okay. It is there. So every administration that has come knows GPHA has a master plan to develop a port in Keta. Okay. But none has stepped forward to develop it. To declare the place a port. Declare the, declare a port. Okay. It is this administration that came and said, I'm going to declare and you are going to develop. Okay. Right? Now, we all understand that financially, we are in a conundrum that we are trying to fix our problems. So, in, in our general ideas, the 650 million that the, the minister mentioned originally was an estimate those days. And those days, when the feasibility was finished, what was the exchange rate? Right? So, if you are going to depend on those figures, you might be a little bit off. You need to negotiate with an investor, then you can peg the development. Anybody who has done construction before, that even when you are doing that, there are always variations. You have to control variations by your numbers and your bills of quantity, and then you can move it forward. In the, within the scope of the feasibility, the cons consultants guesstimated at the time, looking at our economy, looking at our exchange rates, and estimated that the first phase alone will cost us approximately about $650 million. And the second phase, approximately the same. So you're looking at about $1.2 million billion to get the standard, right? Now, considering our terrain, it might be more. But no one completes construction of a port one time. Now, remember, look at the time Takrade port was built, 1928. A few months ago, the president went to commission so the question is, port building does not complete at a go. You start from somewhere and then you keep building on it. So in our feasibility, we've, we've, di we've divided the development of Ketaport into clusters. Okay. And we've invited investors based on the clustering of the port development. So you might come, we have about five clusters. Mm. And you might come and you are interested in only cluster one. It's doable. Mm. You might come and you're interested in cluster one, cluster three. It's doable. We did that for the reason that we want to be able to start so that subsequent generations can continue as we've done in all the other ports. And we also do not want to uh, uh, peg Kita port to be what we've done in Ghana where we call um, the Takrade port to be the Gorgispec port, only exports, and the Tema port to be the Nkrumah port, only imports. Kita port should be open for anything and everything. Imports, exports. Imports, exports. Uh, we told you we are doing um, industrial enclave. We want industries interested to use our port to develop here. Wow. Build their industries here mm -hmm. to feed the port. So you need to get into it by getting the right type of groupings to come into the port. Just as uh, some industries exist in Tema. Where yes. They also feed the port. Yes. Okay. The same industry should be here. You need to be able to plan and such that if you want car assembly plant to come here, the car assembly plants like to be on waterfront. How are you developing to entice them to come? If you want to do, let's say, phone or um, drones, or you want to do maybe uh, solar panels, how do you attract them? You need to attract them such that, and in in this enclave, we have lithium. We have iron. We have other minerals that we have not discovered yet. In Can we? Yes. You have lithium and iron? In Volta region. Okay, in Volta region. Okay. How do you leverage on that okay. to bring industries here? Mm. 
because this administration is saying we should not be taking raw materials we should be adding value in our intake to ensure that we create an industrial enclave we are saying we have all these minerals why don't we leverage and make sure that companies or industries are developed here to take advantage of the ores that we have to add value to it and by doing so it can be exported through Ketaport. right so you have to understand the dynamics of what we are trying to do to appreciate it in volta region we have oil we have not even touched oil yet crude yes okay so how do you, do you take the oil crude and take it somewhere to refine it or can you entice somebody to come and look at the quantum of oil deposit we have and maybe build a, a small refinery here and create jobs right those are the kind of things we are looking for if we can find gas on top of our crude can we have a fertilizer generation plant here can we have a gas uh, liquefied gas plant here those are the kind of things we are looking at so that we can leverage on that to attract investments and trust me when you build a port there are ancillary services hotels will come uh, other tourist attractions will come malls will come and can you build uh, housing to accommodate the employment um, streams you can create here and all those things um, do we intend to ensure that these things are not just saying but doing yes we are doing that and gradually it will emerge there's a few things we cannot say for now but trust me once it all comes together people will appreciate what we have done so far things like when uh, we actually expect the work to begin well the minister says something okay that um you know government has responsibilities and one of the government responsibilities is to house all the entities that will be here and so for instance gpha has put its money where its mouth is to ensure that we can acquire the necessary um, land that we need and the kg traditional council has been gracious enough to allocate as a space for us to be able to put um, administrative building that will entice those who will be the operators of the port to start being anchor tenants in those buildings we have started the designing of the building the land allocation given to us is being added to our ei executive instrument as part of the allocated spot for the port uh, we've, we've already submitted waiting uh, for signatures to be made and then we will start um, the construction quickly and then, and then we will follow the minister's lead on these and the minister was very clear when he met the press yesterday i think uh, the last time the minister came i was part of the team that actually went to see where you intend putting the administrative office mm -hmm. but there's a school there and the minister uh, said uh, he'll talk to the togby uh, and other stakeholders to see how best they can position the school and uh, do the other but how different is that administration block from the container that has been in pictures okay uh, uh, labeled as catapult catapult let me let me that? help you mm. the when we were bringing the consultants here to work we did not have any facility here and we had been approached by several uh, indigenous that they have houses all over that we can gpg can rent so that when we come and bring consultants we bring people to work um, take uh, samples do things we can use gpha in this finished result felt that if you bring somebody here to work it means you need to give the person also a vehicle to be bringing them from wherever they are to the site where they have to work so we decided to erect a project office that structure you see as a container office it's a project office for any project coordinator any project officer who comes to the site to have a space when engineers come they have a space when the consultants abroad come they have a space we can open it up for them and they will then have an office to work from so they just come they want to work on the site they just walk to the beach and do their samples if they want to count the number of crabs laying eggs turtles laying eggs whatever they can just walk down to they want to go to the lagoon they just cut across the street and they go there they are right at the spot they need vehicles running them around when they finish they can take a vehicle and go to wherever they are sleeping so basically that is a project office now you did ask me a question about where we were considering being the administration building it has changed okay the site has changed okay um, we have picked a new space mm. Uh, it's right behind the project office which includes the project office and that is where it is going to be why because it has to the proximity of the administration building to the road we need and remember 
once the port is built, the road is going to be expanded. It will be a bigger road. Than I was actually see. coming to that because uh, looking at the kind of work that's going to happen there, having explained uh, what we intend seeing, mm -hmm. all other things being equal, mm -hmm. The strength of our road here cannot carry the bigger vehicles I'm um, no, 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 imagining. No, no, so no, no. it is it is all part of the plans. You're considering strengthening it the is, roads? No, we're considering expanding the road. Expanding, Even okay. the entrance to the port cannot be what you see. You've mm. been to the yeah, port. There. Yeah. And you see how uh, open the entrance to the port is. Mm. We have to expand the port. And that's why I was even surprised seeing developments all springing up within the lagoon side of the road. Because if we expand the road, we will go this way, we will go that way. And somebody is developing something else, knowing that there's a port expansion coming. And it will definitely affect that spot. And so how do you manage that? And MC and his team has assured us the, when the appropriate time comes, we won't have any issues. Things will be taken care of. But trust me, that is not what you are going to see as an entrance to a port. It will be bigger, it will be enlarged, it will be fortified, it will be strengthened, and then to allow appropriate to and fro from the port um, as, as expected. Right. Uh, since the area was, was declared a port zone, mm -hmm. uh, most of us have been wanting to see something happen. How would you describe the urge of the indigents wanting to see something? For which reason uh, they call your office not important to their need for which reason they call the project office now i know it's a project office mm -hmm. uh which they label catapult your signpost they label it catapult how would you describe their urge to want to see something uh, are they in a hurry is it normal uh, how would you describe it there are two things mm -hmm. or maybe three things i can say mm -hmm. the edge is there since i've been here since 2019 i've actually met with at least two or three youth organizations coming to my office to inquire and also to get education about what we are doing. And I was very elated uh, when they came to see me. I've also met uh, elderly groups that have come to see me. In fact, I've met a group that was made up of uh, intellectuals and um, indigenous from this area who have worked with the UN World Bank, uh, a group of about 20, 25 eminent people. I've also met with associations, organizations um, that have come to find out what we are doing and what they can do to help us spread the gospel. But there are also the other side. Um, and, and I think I have to take opportunity of this to, to clarify something. Patrick, you and I know if Qatar port development was purely politics, MPP would be doing a disservice to themselves. building Qatar port was only for political purposes. MPP will not come to Qatar because Qatar does not vote for MPP. You, you, we should agree on that. Yeah. But this government, this president, is not building Qatar port just for votes. This government, from what this president has made me aware of and for which I am working with GPHA to ensure, is Volta region, Oti region, is part of Ghana. And every region is getting a development project. So why can't Volta region get a development project? What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with get Volta region getting a development project. Now, when we started this project, Oti region was not a region. It was one region, Volta region. So now when I speak, this project is not for Volta region. This vo vo project is for Volta region and OT region. Why do I say that? Some of the clustering in our feasibility is in OT region. The, 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 the uh, tourism part, the grottos and the caves, is in OT region. So you cannot now take OT region out of the development process. So this administration is interested in ensuring that every region gets its fair share of the national cake. And Volta Region's na national cake is Kitapo development. So an indigenous who politicized this project and for that matter bastardized it is doing a disservice to him or herself. Let's take politics out of this. 
because this government has taken politics out of it now of course within our own local bantering we can say our government is bringing it but truth be told it is a national cake affair and volta region OT region deserves to have its national cake and that is what we are doing now if that is not the case a boy from ashanti region who does not speak the language who does not understand the culture very well why would i be spending sleepless nights trying to ensure that this project comes to fruition we can do politics as usual but that is not what this government is trying to do this government is ensuring that western region has got its has got its fair share ashanti region has got its fair share the great Accra has got its fair share eastern region is getting its fair share uh, western north western south the bonus and the rest they all getting their fair. what is wrong with volta regional OT region get his fair share so for me if an engineer indigenous who is going to benefit if not personally family members are going to benefit ancestors are going to benefit opposes a strategic development like this i'm sad i feel very sad i mean i would prefer somebody who's not from here to throw wrenches into it because they don't like my people from this side of the country but if you are from here and you understand the impact of developing such a facility here to the to the economy of this area and you you bastardize it and you poo poo it you are not doing justice to your own area you are not doing justice to your region and you're not doing justice to your family let us take politics out of it and do it purely by national development and you will see the impact now one construction of the port alone creates jobs after construction of the port creates jobs the economic impact is unimaginable it will be for generations and generations to come i see a bigger economic development um, impact on this place and if we plan well and we come together as a family to get this thing done right <laughs> everybody will benefit ghana will get a very beautiful facility and indigenous from this area will also get an economic development that would prevent the migration of our young men and women from this area to accra and the Temes and it's it's extended environs to find a job the port will be here you don't have to go anywhere you can save a lot of the money in your pocket. Why? Because your grandfathers and your fathers and your family members have housing that have become ghost houses because people are migrating to other places to work and there's nobody living in them. They will come back. We will develop our areas and it will be the same as in development in Accra, Eastern region, um, the Temes, the Western region, Central regions. And I think that is what we need to um, concentrate on instead of the political bantering and the bastardizing that we are seeing let me tell you something anytime there's news out there that gpha is coming to do something in 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 keta we get an attack in our post or symbols of the post the flag wires are cut posts are cut down signboards are cut down and things like that now people make fun of the signboard let me share something with you on my way coming here i saw plots of land or allocations for churches and for families and they have put a sign there stay keep off land for the aquaculture family stay off land for the zomashi family um, um cemetery why do we do that we want to warn trespassers right the site for keta port development means nothing but to ward off encroachers people will encroach with expectation that when it is time to develop, they are, there's a, a compensation item. Well, we took uh, markers long time ago before my arrival. In 2018, we took a marker. When I arrived in 2019, I took a marker. 2020, we took a marker. 2021, we took a marker. So we have these markers to establish those who are encroaching. And we know once EI is signed, anybody who has encroached is not entitled to any compensation item. But we put a sign there to as notice as our legal regime require, so that anybody who is encroaching will understand that if you go there and the time comes, there won't be any compensation item for you. So don't go and waste your money there. So people poo poo in it and put it on Facebook and making fun of it. They do not understand the process. And in Ghana, the, the president himself has said, be a citizen, not a spectator. So I see them as citizens expressing their frustration, not understanding the process. And for that matter, 
uh, making fun of it but we will get there right we need to go but just a quick one um you said uh, it will be okay if we take politics out of it mm -hmm. but this npp administration is what is spearheading the establishment of the port here mm -hmm. should they be out of power do we see any other political party coming to power continuing this project that would be sad if any uh well what i mean to ask is <laughs> is the port an npp party agenda no the port, I've explained to you, the port is a GPHA agenda spearheaded by this administration. Okay. This is a GPHA master plan. So if any government comes and it is not going to push GPHA to move it forward, that government will not be doing a disservice to this country. But this administration has taken upon itself to ensure that as part of the master plan of GPHA, GPHA cannot wait any longer to implement it. They have to implement it now as part of the National Cake Division for Voter Region and OT Region. And that's why we are doing it. Right. Finally, uh, as Director for Ketapot, what's your expectation from other stakeholders, the indigenous, the chiefs, and of course, politicians? Well, uh, Patrick, let me uh, say this. My expectation is a lot of prayers from the chiefs and the people of this area. Because um, GPHA can do its best, but we need the support of the chiefs and the people of Volta Region and OT Region to see this project come to a fruition. One. Two. I also did, will ask for prayers for this administration and GPHA for uh, God to give us the wisdom and, uh, and the money uh, to be able to engage foreign investors and create a formidable partnership that will be beneficial to the, the, this country and uh, our people here. I also will expect uh, people will give us patience. They will be patient enough um, to allow us to do what is right. I don't want us to do what is expedient, um, but to do what is right so that um, this project will be done and be done well. So it doesn't become one day wonder. We start something that will collapse um, to the chagrin of the expectations of the people. We need um, the continuous prayers and support, and um, uh, we have to be ambassadors of this project, not detractors of this project. Ketaport is here to stay. GPHA is not going to abandon developing Ketaport. And I pray that everybody from this area, outside this area, who is an indigene, who is, believes in the Ghanaian agenda, that we are all Ghanaians and should be supportive of what any administration is doing, will support this project uh, to fruition. And hopefully it will come to fruition. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander Eduse. Uh, but before you go, apart from being a lawyer, director for Ketapod, working with GBA, what other talent? Do you have any other talent? Other talent? Yes. Oh, well, um, I used to play field hockey. Okay. Um, it's, it's been my passion. Okay. I've played field hockey for since my secondary school days, and even uh, when I you still play, I can still play. I haven't played for a while. Okay. I used to play with the former president, <laughs> okay. on the same team. Okay. Um, I, I was um, I was prostituting a little bit. Former, you mean former president Mahama? No, Mills. Mills. Okay. The yes, Mills is a hockey hockey yeah, player. Okay. And then we I did veterans and citizens. If you are not in any of these clubs, you play citizens or veterans. And I, mm. I prostituted myself a little bit playing for citizens and, and veterans. But I've not gone to the pitch for a long, long time. Um, it's not because I don't want to play. It's because of time. Yeah, the demand. I think I think I should I should start you doing should that. Do Field you hockey is a, is a is a solid passion that I like. Do you doing. cook? Um, yes, I, uh, anybody who has traveled and lived outside the country for 30 years, if you don't know how to cook, <laughs> you will starve to death. I cooked in the University of Ghana, and when I traveled outside without a spouse, I was doing my own cooking. So what can you cook? Rice and stew? Oh, I'll do rice and stew. I can do jollof rice. Okay. And I uh, can do proper salad. Proper jollof? Oh, oh, proper Ghana jollof. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. yes Beef yes. jollof? Beef jollof. Just put it in. Uh, I can do. Should we set the fire, give you the ingredients? So you oh, first? my brother, I will shame you. Uh, I will shame you. Not, not the ones that they do lately that they put all the something on the patch <laughs> that you put in you know. uh, fresh fresh ingredients fresh fresh wow i'm the last of the family i was always in the kitchen with mom okay. so i learned how to cook 
Mm. You know, if you're last born, you know, they pamper you small. Okay. So I learned how to do the cooking. And the last ones eat a lot. They eat a lot too. So, you know, <laughs> I learned I learned how to do a few okay. things. Okay. Okay. Do you yeah. sing? I like singing. I don't think I have a good voice. Okay. But my, my, my kid says I shouldn't be doing the singing okay. at home. But I do. Mm. When I'm in the shower, that's a favorite place to, to sing. You know, bellow it out. So mm. I try What's to your favorite genre? Um, hey, you're going to get me in trouble. Oh. Mm. Zero I have picked my wife's favorite person until he got married. Okay. And then my, lo my wife lost favor. But I still love him. Mm. Uh, what's the gentleman's name? Uh, um, um, oh, you asked me too quick. Okay. But if you ask me, my favorite would be the uh, Daughters of Glorious Jesus. Okay. They, those are my favorite uh, ladies. That's, uh, those are old. Old, songs. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They, are, they are still... Yeah, they're still relevant. They are still relevant yeah. in, our, in our current uh, gospel. I'm a gospel person. Mm. But this guy, um, give me, it's a, it's a, he just got married about a year or so ago. Joe Metal. Joe, Joe Metal. It's my wife's favorite. And I love him. Mm. And, but now, Diana Hamilton is, is making waves yeah. and... I'm falling in, favor, in love with Diana, Diana Hamilton, Hamilton too. So I'm a gospel guy. Anyway, uh, nice talking to you. Nice this talking afternoon. to you too, uh, It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a lot of insight into the Keta project. Uh, and I hope listeners out there to now understand uh, in a better way the Keta project. And this, uh, to want to see the project start just like that uh, i don't think it's in place we need to see something that can stand the test of time something strong something solid not just anything and i'm sure if it had been for political reasons we would have seen something springing up of course then later of course you do play politics with everything but yeah. this one is for voter region mm. and ot region mm. and we have to make it right mm. for me if nothing at all we make it right mm. and if we can do it right generations will, 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 will praise us for the good work we've done and i also invite everybody okay. to togo akwala church program tomorrow yeah. so that we can continue the conversation tomorrow 9 a.m 9 a.m sharp okay, okay. the we'll forecourt of togo akwala church um, palace i think apart from the one eye explanation you just gave what else is there to know <laughs> i don't know maybe there Four. may be more for no, for engagements yes about the catapult about an hour explanation you just gave uh -huh. what else is there to know oh there's a lot i mean but we cannot capture it all in, in an hour tomorrow if people come and they want to ask more questions we will engage them in questions but the 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 catapult uh, development and the the propaganda surrounding it mm. is sometimes very disheartening mm. i've heard that we have 30 employees and some of them have retired collecting all those yeah. it is not true they, they 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 were appointed they they were employed they are now on retirement they are it taking is their not retirement true. package my brother it is not true so you are the only appointee i'm the only appointee the anybody else the... is a employee of gpha GPA. and if you come to the kitapo secretariat right now as i speak i have mr samuel jaka um i have um Eunice jamra and then we have um ken and then we have uh, two national service personnel. That's all. That's it. That's it. And they are employees of GPHA. They are all employees. National service personnel came to work for GPHA. And I just went and collected two of them to come and join us. In fact, we came with one. Mm. Yeah. Because we brought everybody. So we brought all the four people. Mm. And then we left one national service personnel back in Tema, should in case somebody come looking for us. Okay. And we intend to be coming to Volta region and Uti region um, from now to the end of the year, um, engaging um, people, sharing our story, sharing our vision, sharing GPH's interest in developing Ketapot, and what they all can do to help us make this work. Thank you very much. Uh, I keep saying finally, finally, but questions keep coming in my mind. Uh, people say the project office is not being used, it's just there for fun, it's just there rusting away. They want to see it being they want to see somebody stationed there doing something uh, like you rightly say it's a project office for engineers and other people mm -hmm. when they come around but when should we see the project office busy once the project begins once people start coming to take soil samples do uh, pegins do anytime people have been here the office is open mm -hmm. in fact uh, we had 
specialized place for even for the police because we were being harassed in the area okay so when we come we like to stay work late now we can do that because you know many you may never know yeah. who will come and harass you even flag post is being harassed even sign post is being harassed how much more a human being you keep there working late our intent is to at some point within the shortest possible time have an information post the open we've built as part of the project office an information post that you can go and ask questions and we can give you leaflets and we can give you updates on what is going on we intend to open that okay. post at the project soon. office at the project office okay because that is where the only edifice we have here apart from the wee lighthouse if you want to go to the wee lighthouse we have people there uh, who work for Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority? Not necessarily for Keta Port, but for Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, who can answer questions for you. But for Keta Port st um, staff of four, including myself, five, we are in, in Tema. We have an office space. We operate from there and we come here if and when. We were here last night. We are spending all day today in the post. Um, tomorrow, we will engage Toby Akwalache and the chiefs and the people of KG. And after that, we will go back to Accra. Mm. And then maybe a week after that, we will start making our moves. But we've made a plan that we will be covering that space, making sure that somebody is there at all times to answer questions if anybody has a question, um, to give information if anybody has an information. When they don't have, they will table the question you have, and an answer will be furnished appropriately. We want to be able to minimize the apprehension sure. as best as we can. Mm. So mm -hmm. we are praying that people will work with us as we also try as much as possible to correct all our wrongs and make sure that the right things are done uh, um, to all, our benefits. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander Duse. is the director for the Ketaport, and uh, I've been talking to him. Uh, tomorrow, there will be uh, some engagement with the community at Togbi Akolache's Palace. 9 a.m. is the time. And uh, it's been wonderful talking to him this afternoon. In case you missed any aspect of this interview, just log on to Sun City TV on YouTube and uh, you can see everything clearer. And my name is Patrick Jramado and uh, my producer has been Edward Kessie.